Ruth, 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 Mark, and John for inviting me uh, to launch my first talk. Me, Ricky Real, the silence is not an option. Can you speak a bit louder, please? Sorry? She said, can you speak louder, please? I can't speak louder, I'm sorry. I can come in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A few people at my first launch, which was last week, uh, in Queen Mary University, together with journalists, asked me why I chose such a powerful title for my book. Ricky Rio, Silence is Not an Option, gives many messages. Justice for Ricky Rio campaign has been very active and vocal, vocal since 1997. We had no choice but to demonstrate, have public meetings or vigils to continually raise our voice. This was due to the poor investigation, attitude of the police force, including stereotyping our family. It clearly showed that they had formed their own opinions of Asian people, as mentioned in the book. We had two options open to us, either remain silent, sit at home and grieve forever, regret not trying to find out how and why Ricky died. The second option was to raise our voice and ask questions, demand answers, which is our right, everybody's right. The title of the book is saying that for us, silence is not an option, it never was. But it also gives encouragement to others that staying silent will not give you answers to any injustice you have suffered. Writing the book was important as I have been, as I have seen and felt grief, pain and emptiness, which we feel as Ricky's parents. This feeling is also shared by Ricky's siblings. It is now tragic, it is now tragic to see that these feelings which we are going through are now impacting our grandchildren. This was witnessed by many who attended the launch last week in London. It was important to tell future generation about what happened to Ricky and how his case has affected us. I believe my race and color became a barrier which prevent, prevented in getting justice for Ricky. It was because we refused to go away, refused to be silent about how the police had let us down over and over again. From the time they failed us to investigate his disappearance then his subsequent death, that recently we found out that undercover police officers from the special demonstration squad were spying on us. And these are big people right at the top. And uh, I have been given the name of one of the officers who also is connected to the Lawrence family. And I have been given some reports, the first family ever to have a meeting with the inquiry team, the first family ever to receive the reports. So we have made, uh, there were barriers, but we keep on breaking them. and just going over them. Even that was denied because we had to march the streets, look for my Ricky. The Justice for Ricky Real campaign was born, not, not by choice, but out of desperation because we realized early on, before even Ricky's body was found, that we were not going to get any justice through the police. Ricky died 25 years ago and the campaign has been running for the same length of time. Imagine having to wait 25 years, a quarter of a century, for accountability from the authorities and the truth about your child's death and still facing endless years to get answers. I cannot bring my son back, but I can lay open to others what we as a family have endured and continue to endure. So the lessons may be learned from our pain. I had been thinking of writing a book about my son's case for a long time and that tomorrow becomes another tomorrow. But first of all, but first we needed to, uh, all the obstacles or challenges that were thrown in our, in our way meant we needed to deal with those first. Ill health also became an obstacle in this scheme where I almost died. What spurred me to write this now is more than one thing. One day I came across a book cover showing my photograph with Mike Mansfield QC. It was a book written by Laura Pendle, who is a senior lecturer at the university. 
Her book it was entitled Tackling Institution Racism, and Ricky's case was also mentioned in that book. The cover photo on this book was once taken on the first day of Ricky's inquest. This led to more searches only to discover that there are many other books, policies, theses, dissertations, and research which refer to Ricky's case. I was not aware of that. So they are using Ricky, and I was told that this book should be in each and every library, and it should be in each and every lawyer's uh, office. So I formed an pleasure to write a book one day soon, but life was getting in a way as usual, and part of me was reluctant to confront and commit to paper the hell that we had been through. This last and, and What pushed me into actually putting paper to the pen or fingers up to a keyboard was a hilarious moment. My granddaughter's seven-year-old twins came and sat next to me at my house with their little notebooks and recently sharpened pencils and told me that as a school project, they had to write about a famous person. And that face, famous person in their eyes was the Uncle Ricky. Mm -hmm. They started asking questions about Ricky, but what can you tell seven-year-olds? And uh, mind you, they were very persistent, just like their mother, my daughter, Ricky's sister. All my grandchildren who have never met Ricky want to know about him and ask a lot of questions about him because he is still so much a part of our life as a family. My eldest grandchild has now decided to pursue a different path due to Ricky's death. After they left, I started my first chapter. I have never written a book before, didn't know how to write but I have written quite a lot of poetry. Uh, some of it's been printed as well, published as well, but never a book, and did not know what to say, but the fingers kept on typing, and somehow it turned into a book. It was quite a traumatizing time for me. I have never forgotten this nightmare, but... But putting it on paper somehow made it more real, brought back more memories, more nightmares, and a few hospital admissions as well. I was sometimes shocked at myself when I remember what we had been forced to live through. My search then began to find a publisher. I did not want any fame or fortune, simply a story to be told which my supporters continued to ask for. Another friend, uh, Mr. Bawinda Rana, recommended Com Rai, is that the way I pronounce your name? So thank you, Mr. Rana. My huge thanks to Cohn, my publisher, my dear friend, as he remained calm throughout the entire process, even when I sent him several emails, messages a day. He responded promptly to all my messages, which reduced my stress, but doubled his. How he dealt with or make any sense at all is a mystery to me. John, Mike, Suresh won't know what I'm like with emails. These are the people always protecting me, supporting me, and standing with me for years. This book is Ricky's legacy, written with support from Balwan, my husband, who made sure I was looking after myself, giving me food, cups of tea to ensure I had regular breaks. My children, for, my children by supporting me, especially every time I had problems with my computer, either I lost my work or I did not remember where I saved it and my grandchildren prompting me to carry on by asking endless questions about the Uncle Ricky. People, including myself, often talk about loss of a child and how it affects them, but many people, but not many people talk about loss, loss of a sibling. My children have also written a piece about Ricky's death and how it has changed them. His death and the investigation, or rather lack of investigation, has changed our family forever. We all get better at perfecting I am okay, mask which we show to the world. My children, their partners, my grandchildren, my husband, Ricky's father, our extended family, supporters and friends have been a rock. And without them, I'm not sure I would have survived Ricky's death. There is a petition on um, Chain.org about Ricky's case, which is asking for a fresh investigation, not a paper exercise like before, but a proper fresh investigation. Please sign and share it. We all need to do what we can to ensure a full, fresh investigation takes place and not just a paper exercise. 
We want all of you to write to your MPs asking for fresh investigation and please do copy the London Mayor and also my friend John McDonnell. There is a standard leaflet for this which is on my Facebook under Sukhdev Rio and everybody is welcome to join my Facebook and, uh, and I try and update it regularly. There is a website named Chastri for Ricky Real, which sadly is not up to date and I don't have the skills to do this. Maybe I will find someone to update it soon. Asian Dove Foundation, Dr. Daz, formed the first song for Ricky and there is a CD with loads of songs. The first song for Ricky. Thank you. Um, my first contact with Taranjit was a Zoom meeting to discuss ways forward via trade uh, unions. She's a great friend, very powerful, with a head full of ideas. Mm -hmm. She also became my voice at meetings when I was ill. So thank you, Taranjit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Maybe there's somebody who could write a song in Punjabi before me. I <laughs> think so. So that's a future project. <laughs> Um, I went to the radio station to do an interview, and that's what I was asked. They said, my book, not many you know, Asian, other people can read it. Can that be translated? So I said, well, I'll think about it in 20 years' time if I'm still alive. And uh, also a song for someone to please write and perform a song in Punjabi. Thank you. And that's my friend sure. sitting there. Maybe think about <laughs> it. I hope you all buy and read my book. It gives a lot of messages and spoke to people who feel alone and neglected by the institutions. I lived with Ricky for 20 years, locked him in my heart for 25 years, and now I share my Ricky with you all. I put my heart, soul, weakness, and strength in my book. This is to show people that we all go through these emotions at some stage in our lives, and we should not be ashamed to show our emotions. Please do write book reviews so that we can see what you think of it. Please keep on supporting us as we, as we need to know who killed my son and why. We all need peace and only and that will only come once we have justice for Ricky. Thank you.